Nehemiah has it in his heart that he wants to ask the king about returning to Jerusalem to rebuild the city. He prays. He doesn't just bring it up. The Lord makes the way, and the king notices that something is wrong. Nehemiah answers, but still doesn't ask his question. The Lord helps him out further. The king realizes Nehemiah wants something and asks what his request is. Nehemiah shoots off an error prayer. Even though he had already prayed about this, he makes his request and it is granted. There are many parallels between this story and Ezra's. The Lord is sending his people back home. He will do it here and there using different people, but one parallel is that Ezra and Nehemiah were both people who cried over their nation's sins and wept for how they had forsaken the Lord and all they had lost and fasted and prayed and sought the Lord. They both experienced the Lord touching the heart of a king, one in authority over them, to make it possible. They both gave the testimony that the Lord's good hand was on them, giving them favor. We call that grace. God's grace is evident in all areas of our lives. He gives us all we need and abundantly more. Another parallel with Ezra is being accused of rebellion against the king. Nehemiah is bold in speech, but starts out fearful in action. He tells those coming against them that God in heaven will prosper their work. But before that, he was sneaking around at night to see what the situation was and didn't tell anyone why he was there or what he hoped to do. He acknowledges that it was the Lord who released him, giving God the glory for getting him there and giving him the provision needed, and doesn't confuse that with the king actually being the one who signed the letters and gave permission. The leaders, already in Jerusalem, believe the Lord has ordained Nehemiah's mission, and they agree to come together and rebuild the city. The good hand of the Lord was on them.